Welcome back to a new video. As you know, on this channel, we are doing 23 LeBron James videos in 23 weeks. This is a new episode, and I'm really excited for this one. And this video breaks down the players that played against both LeBron James and Michael Jordan. It's a really, really interesting video, and I'm really excited for you guys to enjoy. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn. The one thing I'd love for you to do is if you do enjoy these types of videos, please help me out by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you are new for more LeBron James videos coming to you throughout the year. And... Of course, full credits are on the screen right now to all the footage used in this video, as well as down below in the description. And this video is brought to you by SeatGeek, but more on them later. Does LeBron have to do something, or can he do something where you would go, now I would look at him as the best player? Uh, no. The conversation, it, it really is uh, a non-conversation. You know, I played against both of them, obviously. Playing against him and MJ, I think, it, for me, it's... MJ all day long only because how I, I played against him and you know MJ just had everything you know from mid-range to three-point to post-up game and he could score and dominate in each position uh, LeBron is dominant both of them were dominant in, in each uh, way that they possibly could be um, the way the game is you know the way the, the rules have changed uh, it, it's hard to really compare the generations, you know, if you look at what MJ did during his era, like I played in between both those eras and the rules were totally different. Like you can't touch a guy now, you know, you, a guy will go to the free throw line 20, 25 times a game just off of ticky tack stuff. But he used to, and Phil Jackson said this uh, when he was promoting his book years ago, if Mike played today, he'd, he would average 45 in his prime. Easy. You believe that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's, you know, so much is made about uh, the errors. We just, it's just not a comparison. The best player I've ever played against is LeBron James. I think LeBron's the best because he, he just makes everybody around him so much better. Mm. Where it gets back to the point where, well, Jordan won the game, right? Yeah. So how you argue that? But LeBron, when he at the at the end of the game, he's got the last second shot and he penetrates or whatever, and he's got three guys on him. He passes the ball, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And and Jordan's just rising up and shooting and making it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, back then it was like the defense was different. Like when Jordan caught the ball on the wing, it was just him and the primary defender. The next thing is the goal, mm -hmm. right? Where where now LeBron gets the ball on the wing, got the primary defender. You got and the you weak got side the, block, slides over the ball side block, and you got a guy at the elbow. So LeBron sees three guys. Yeah. Right? So passing makes more sense Correct. than it would back in the day. Yeah, and I just think I think LeBron could could lead the league in all five major statistical categories. Blocks, rebounds, assists, points, all that if he wanted to. Mm. Where I don't know if MJ could have done that. Because mm. he didn't not saying he couldn't have, but the mentality that he had, he was just going to Get on my back and let's go. We're I'm going to get there. Yeah, MJ is still at the top for me. I mean, I, I got I got Bron, you know, right there with obviously all the accomplishments from, from start to continuing uh, on. But for me, that's just my, my background. It's, it's MJ. You know, I always say uh, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. I grew up with MJ watching him six. Uh, win six championships in the 90s. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of running out of... Uh, uh, arguments for Michael. I mean, this, the, what this guy has done has been nothing short of incredible. The longevity, um, and you know, I always say, you know, being called king at 15 uh, and how he turned out and what he's done for communities where he played and, and changed so many lives. So uh, he's a very, very special athlete. And um, I think for now, we need to appreciate that uh, watching him and uh, at the level he's playing at. When you look at his accolades and you look how the longevity, and then you look at the biggest part of it was the expectations coming out of high school, that type of pressure. And I never, and I saw a lot of NBA guys was going out, flying out to see this play. Celebrities, rappers, Jay-Z and all them going out to see him play. So I'm like, man, this kid must be nice, but I don't think he that good, you know? And then just to see pressure that was put on him coming into the league and to live up to those expectations because they was like he could be the greatest to ever play the game and you like man they giving this kid this already and so for him to live up to it and probably surpass the expectations that's tough because nobody in our league has ever had to deal with nobody. these type of expectations coming in right. and so and that's like and then 
the, probably the most scrutinized superstar. So I, I gotta probably put him up there at, at ghost status, man. Nah, it's it's undeniable. Uh, this conversation, I mean, he. <laughs> When we talk about the GOAT, man, he might be the GOAT. There's only a couple cats that come along uh, in our generation, our lifetime rather, that uh, can do the things on the court that a LeBron James and a Michael George can do. And you don't get to the NBA without confidence. You don't become an all-star without confidence. And you certainly aren't an all-NBA or a Hall of Famer unless oh. you have supreme confidence. And that's what Michael just snatched from those cats. Yeah. He was, it, a, he was a top dog. LeBron is, I'm so, LeBron yeah. as great as he is, oh. does not do that. You might, LeBron right. might beat you, but LeBron's not snatching anybody's confidence from them when they go at home at night and dream. They can't dream that they can even beat you in their sleep. That's what MJ <laughs> did to guys. Yeah. They, they have you embarrassed when you got to go drive home with your girlfriend or your wife after a game, the way he just embarrassed you in front of your own, own fans in your own city. That's what MJ did on a nightly basis. No load management yeah. days, you know, no, no sitting out because you had a sprained finger. Uh, that guy wanted every person in that arena, even the last person while I was sitting up there, no cheap seats, to know they just watched the greatest basketball player of all time. And he did that 82 games a year. People were saying LeBron or, or MJ. I said, you know what? LeBron did something twice that I don't think Michael Jordan could ever do once. He won two NBA titles with Shane Battier as the starting power forward. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he was, let me tell you what, man, for, for as good as you think he, he was, he was that much better. That's it. <laughs> that, 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 that's the, you know, I'm biased, but I don't think, you know, I, don't, I love Mike, you, you know, one of the greatest of all time, but LeBron did it twice with me. It's, but, you know, look, the, the, the force, the intelligence, um, uh, you know, there, he didn't have a weakness when he was in his prime. He's still playing amazing now, but I mean, just there's there no answer. There was no answer for him, and he was like a, a queen on the on the the chessboard and he'd just do everything. And so, it made my job certainly easier. Um, but you know, I love playing with him. He was a you know as great of a player he was, even better teammate. You played against both of them, and Jordan was still you know his last three years with the Bulls when you played against him, right? So you know both of them kind of in their primes or at their best. Talk about what it was like to go up against both of them, like the differences you see. Well, I think Mike, for me, Michael Jordan was, it was a killer. It didn't matter. He wanted to come in and kill you. From, from LeBron's <laughs> standpoint, the first time, you know, I played against him, obviously I was a little older. I think it maybe just been a little more respect factor. I was able to, you know, do more against him even when he was in his, you know, prime, you know, five or six years in the league. But you know, he's, He's an unbelievable talent. I mean, I take either one of them any day, but in my mind, MJ, I'm from North Carolina. Sure. He's from North Carolina. We went to the University of North Carolina. I'm going with my guy, and I really believe it. I mean, LeBron is great, but Michael Jordan is the greatest. I hate the argument yeah. because I grew up a Jordan guy, and I played with LeBron, and he won me. They're both unbelievable. Yeah. And I never thought I'd see another Jordan. And then obviously there, there's guy, you know, they're not him. I just don't ever think I'll see another LeBron. Never, yeah. I just don't. I, I, I just, so the argument's hard. LeBron's body of work is flawless. There's no way to compare MJ's body of work, seriously, yep. except for six for six in the championship. But can you even compare them as players? Or is this a stupid conversation? I mean, I hate it. I'll be honest. And I know why people do it, because I have to. Right. But at the end of the day, we can have this argument back and forth and we can bring 10 people in and someone could say this, that, and the other and be like, damn, you're right. And then I come back with something else and be like, damn, you're right. So, like, to me, unless they played against each other in the same era, is, is it different? They're both great. I mean, we're talking about like probably the two best. Yeah. So, what are we really arguing about? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's impossible to have a right answer because, like I said, you know, six championships is unbelievable, right? What Bron's going to be top five in every major statistical category ever yeah. is unbelievable. Longevity. Like, yeah. I know what I felt like at 38. Yeah. I wasn't averaging 30. Well, I never averaged 30 a game, not even when I was <laughs> about five. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's to me, like, that is amazing. Who was the hardest player you had to defend? I think LeBron. Early LeBron, too. Well, actually, I think Jordan was the toughest, man. So, Jordan. The reason I Are say Jordan. Are Wizards, Jordan? Shit, yeah. The first year was his Jordan, not the um, not his last year. I mean, the thing about Jordan was you knew what he was going to do. You knew what he was going to do. 
and he gonna he gonna get you up. He gonna pull up. He gonna go left, pull up, go fade right. And you knew it was coming. We're like LeBron. When I first started guarding LeBron, like LeBron, I didn't really know what he was gonna do. And he was quite successful, but it was still like, you know, it wasn't as predictable, which made it a little harder. But Jordan, I knew exactly what he gonna do. But if I had to give it to one, I would probably say Jordan. Um, and you and you and you and maybe tie with LeBron and Kobe. So with the NBA All-Star break coming up, that means we are heading into the second half of the NBA season. And there's nowhere else I would rather get my tickets to go watch an NBA game than with SeatGeek. As mentioned earlier, SeatGeek is kindly sponsoring today's video, and for good reason. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, festivals, sporting events, and live shows. When I make it to America later on this year, I'll be extremely excited if I get a chance to watch LeBron James live, and I'm going to be doing that through the SeatGeek app. What SeatGeek does is they put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure that you are getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale from 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. So if you're keen to go to an NBA game or a concert or an event, use the code NSNBA for $20 off your purchase. That is code NSNBA on the screen right now for $20 off your next purchase. And a massive thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. Like when people talk about, you know, your favorite players and, and the, or the best players in the world, you know, I say Mike and I say Kobe. You know what I mean? And then everybody else. LeBron's after that for you? Um, definitely. Okay. Definitely after that. Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. LeBron James is a special player. I've heard a lot of players say he's in his own lane. Uh, he has goals in mind, what he wants to accomplish, and, and it's clear that he wants to be the greatest. You know, when he's saying, you know, I want to play so many years, like I'm saying, I want to play as long as I can. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the greatest, and he's, he's a player that we have not seen before because he can do a lot of things. I think at the end of the day, LeBron can do a lot of things very well. I don't think, I mean, Michael Jordan was probably the greatest to, to put on a game, a pair of basketball shoes. Mm -hmm. And LeBron is on the way. And it's tough, like right now, he's still playing the game. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this when he's done. I remember like, oh, you're not Michael Jordan. You don't have the scowl on your face. You don't do this. You know, all of that stuff. It was always said. He okay. doesn't get into saying it publicly. Got it. Behind closed doors. I guarantee he has on his list of things to do for the day is kill that guy. Now it's like, oh, he didn't say it on social media. So maybe, you know. But you got to broadcast it. Yeah. I think that he, he makes things happen. He does a lot of things. He's an all-around basketball player. He makes everybody else better. Only thing that I don't like about him is that he doesn't have that killer instinct like Michael Jordan. I think LeBron is a more all-around basketball player. The he gets score. everybody in. Jordan would have took the basketball and scored every time. He would have scored every time. Every time. He would have went to the block. He would have made Pippen them do whatever they wanted to do. And you just make sure that I'm going to get me the ball and I'm going to take them shots. When nobody else on that team would have took a shot. We called him Black Jesus for a reason. I played against him a long time, and he just did it. You know, he, he just had, he had all that. He just had the mentality to win. And if it gets close, he gonna take the shot. Correct. Michael Jordan would take over the game more. If LeBron was like that, we would be far, not even talking about mm. a player like that. You were one of four players to play with both MJ and LeBron. So how would you compare playing with MJ versus playing with LeBron? There are two to totally different players that go about their business totally different ways, but they got the same common goal. They want to win. You know, Bron's going to Bron's gonna kind of try to be politically correct with you a little bit more. MJ is just more direct, decisive, right at you. Like, if you're not doing your job, like, hey, listen, he's going to let you know. It was a different dynamic, but he just works. He worked both MJ and LeBron Work ethic, top tier. Top tier. Their work ethic is top tier. Mentally, they're strong. And it just comes down to, like, one is more aggressive, one is a little bit, like, Braun's going to try to massage the situation a little bit more, but they're both going get, to get to it. I, I hate the fact that everybody says, like, Braun doesn't have the killer gene and everything like that. Like, playing with him in Cleveland showed me that all that nonsense that, like, Skip Bayless be talking, <laughs> he don't have the killer gene. Like, maybe you don't shut your old ass up. <laughs> Like, dog, because do you remember the shot that LeBron hit 
against Jimmy Butler in Chicago, the three in the corner. Yeah, them to win the game. To win the game. So Braun had actually been playing terrible down the stretch. Like he had missed some shots, free throws, turnovers, like terrible. And we get to the huddle and David Black, I don't know why Black did this. <laughs> he draws the play up. He's like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he draws the play up. Yeah, JR, you get right here and get the shot. Braun was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Sorry, JR. <laughs> he made, Braun, I've never seen this. He said, absolutely not. Grabs the clipboard, erases the play. And just said, all right, this is what we're going to run. You go here, you go here. Hey, I'm going to fake. He tells, I think it was Del Dover taking it out. I forgot. And he was like, yo, I'm going to fake this way. I'm going to pop to the corner and get me the ball right there. I'm going to hit the shot. I've never seen somebody draw up their own game mm. winner. Like, so when everybody, ah, oh, Braun ain't this mentally MJ. Like, hey, listen, Braun, Braun's not scared of that moment. We all stop with that narrative, bro. To be honest, the play that was drawn up, um, I scratched it. And uh, I just told uh, Coach, just give me the ball. And, um, you know, we either going to go in overtime or I'm going to win it for us. It was that simple. Were you supposed to inbound on the original play? I was. I was supposed to take the ball out. I told Coach, there's no way I'm taking the ball out unless I, unless I could shoot it over the backboard and go in. Uh, so, you know, I told him, uh, have somebody else take the ball out, give me the ball, and everybody get out the way. You got LeBron when he just comes into the league, yeah. and then you face Mike when he was just leaving the league. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What if LeBron ends up the all-time leading scorer? Let's say he yeah. doesn't he – doesn't, Which he could, though. Yes, but he doesn't win another championship. But he's a top 10 in assists. Yeah. And probably top 10 in steals and the number one scorer of all time. Yeah, I think, he, he, I think he'll have a strong argument as maybe the best player. Yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it's a great discussion. I have it with my friends all the time. You know, I, I got a lot of friends that think the, the, the torch has been passed already. LeBron is that great. He's like a combination of, I always say he's a combination of Magic Johnson and, and Michael Jordan. Because we all know that he can lead the league in scoring every year if he wanted to but he's very unselfish, great playmaker. And you can tell by what he's doing right now, he makes his teammates better. Like, there's no question that he's he's beaten the Indiana Pacers, who I thought were a better team. But he's a more complete player than Michael. I agree with that 100%. Okay, like, that's I, fair. I think he might be, like, maybe one of the best, most complete players we've ever seen because he makes his teammates better. Who would you rather play with? Uh, LeBron. Everybody listening out here, this is a actual NBA like cornerstone of the NBA. 23, he played in three different eras, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. He knows, if anybody knows, this guy knows. But you got MJ or LeBron. You can play against both of them in their prime. MJ. 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 Is it like clear cut? It's clear cut. Everything he does is just like, just masterful, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If he, he could have he could averaged 40 if he wanted if to. If he wanted if to. If he wanted to, man. Or, if Braun played in y'all era back in the mid in the eighties and the in the nineties, uh -huh. he probably averaged about I think he would probably average about nineteen twenty. The nineteen twenty. Okay. And um, okay. he could definitely play in that era. Okay. But it wouldn't be no it wouldn't be no cake ball. I mean, this is what it is. I told you, man, I said this earlier, man, this is the changing of the guard of everything we've man. known the game to be. And this is the first parts of the the transition of now, Braun being king of the hill. Man, he put 40,000. Think about high school, bro. Think how many buckets you not put up. Think about just the way he finna, he gonna, he's going to have 40,000 40, points, Pete, <laughs> in the fucking That's NBA, bro. That's crazy. It takes, it takes focus. P. will tell yeah. you this. Man, to go through an 82-game season is probably one of the most vigorous things okay. on your mind. On your mind, if anything. So for him to be mentally stimulated, for him to be mentally driven, See, this is what makes him go on top of the list to me. This shit right here. If we talking about shot making, we talking about ability, we talking about skill, he in all those conversations, but now you're doing some shit where, yeah, the greatest couldn't even do this. Wilt couldn't do this. Jordan couldn't do this. 38. Man, 38 in the league is really like 45. Look, oh, you know what's so crazy? He's such a good, he's such a humble kid, such a humble guy. He, he ain't go, he ain't step on everybody like he could have. Y'all, everybody shut the fuck up. Brian, if he wanted to, he a person I can understand doing load management. He's earned the yeah, fucking he right. He don't do load he's management. The, he's earned the right, though. Lou yeah. want to take a week off? Then go ahead and take a week off for load management for us to get this greatness longer? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. He's earned the right. And he, 
may be a better passer than score. You know, just think about that, how crazy that is and in his history of playing. And so it's just been, uh, it's been fun as a fan, it's been fun as a player to compete against him and as a fan to watch him. What we're seeing out of LeBron, it's, it's ridiculous, man. The minutes he's playing, the assists, the, the, the points. And so I, I've never really get into the greatest argument. I think each player has their own skill set and their own talent. But what we're watching right now from this man is, is incredible. Yeah, I was wondering about that because you played against these guys. So you're sort of that bridge guy that you know what Mike was like and obviously what LeBron is like. For him to pass every expectation, I, to me, that's the greatest accomplishment. But, you know, you can look at a lot of things, you know. Jordan didn't come straight out of high school. What if Jordan would have played two more years? Jordan played in a different era, you know. I, so I, I'm i kind of... Um, worn out of the comparisons because I just I think you still have to talk about him being better than Kobe. You can't just jump up to Jordan. I don't think numbers just mean it and I think maybe he is the greatest teammate of all time instead of individual players so when you get into the weeds of it I've heard some really good arguments and I can agree with those but the overall arguments I, I'm not sure. He didn't go to college. Yeah. He's taken every rookie coach he's had to the NBA Finals. So from an educational standpoint and a knowledge base, where did this brain come from? I mean, he's the Einstein of basketball. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at myself, you look at a Jordan, you look at a Shaq, you know, we, we had Hall of Fame coaches. Like Michael Jordan played for Dean Smith, Hall of Fame. Then he goes and meets Phil Jackson, Hall of Fame. Doug Collins, those were his fir first coaches. He's around Tex Winters. I was around Chuck Daly, Coach Knight. So from an educational standpoint, the knowledge that we were given and what we were able to apply out on the field and out on the floor, that came from somewhere. I look at LeBron James and I go, where did he get all this? Because he can look at your coach, figure out your def defensive scheme. He can look at your substitution pattern. He can read the stat sheet. And then he can, you know, not only re read it, but he can dissect it. Then he can come back and put together a game plan. And then he can go out and implement it. LeBron James just came in from high school and said, boom, seven straight finals. You just don't walk in from high school with, with no institutional knowledge and dominate a sport for the years that he's dominated. So when you talk about LeBron James, Michael Jordan, LeBron James is head and shoulders above any of these guys. So are you saying LeBron is better than Michael Jordan? I would pick LeBron James. You would? Uh, yeah. If I'm if I'm if I'm trying to build if a team. I'm, if I'm trying to build a team, so if you're trying to win a series, I'm going with the brain. Okay? If if I got to get 40 points or 50 points, then yeah, I'm I'm taking a Michael Jordan or a Kobe. I, I think LeBron will down is the greatest to do it. You know, uh, when you look at what his his numbers, um, what he's done. Um, on and off the floor, no one's done that. This LeBron, this is something, uh, you know, if you were a betting man, uh, you would bet with him against Father Time, you know, just the things that he's done, um, you know, to date, um, just doesn't look like he gets tired. He understands the game at a high level. Uh, he's shooting a three uh, very well, and he just lets the game come to him. Um, it just, you know, shows, um, you know, to our youth, that, you know, if you, you, you understand the game, you can play for a long time. And uh, hopefully the youth is watching. He's, he's the greatest of all time. Did you face Jordan and LeBron? Oh, yeah. The difference between those is on the court is uh, what? I still put uh, Jordan as number one just because every time he had to win a game, he did. Uh, and the dominance that he had over that era winning six championships in six years with the six opportunities i mean that is just unbelievable to me and he had that the mental game i think was second to none any downside um, to being lebron's teammate no lebron was an outstanding teammate he was an outstanding father outstanding friend outstanding teammate absolutely loved my time with him in cleveland um, he brought out the best in me, especially at that point in my career when I was kind of on the downturn dealing with injuries, couldn't play a lot of minutes, but I had a great role as a three-point shooter and a stretch four man, um, and we had a great season winning 66 games. So uh, LeBron is, is a joy to be with as a person off the floor, as his teammate, and also obviously on the floor, he makes everyone better. We know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Michael Jordan fan. 
but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to do the stronghold. Michael Jordan is still the best player ever. That was my next question for right? you. Right. I'm not going to be that, that dinosaurish. Here's why. I was in a league when LeBron James' name came. Right? This is the next Jordan. Right? MJ. He's here. MJ. Also, they threw an extra one. They mounted that shit on. The next magic. Y'all hibernated this. Right? That was supposed to be a unicorn. Right? By these two. Number, the best point guard ever. Thank you. The best player ever. Until LeBron. Yeah. Right? And the and then he gets here, and then you want to pretend, you're going to pretend that he's not better than just the one player you said. He caught both players, then he caught an extra who's leading everybody in scoring. He surpassed him, and then you want to get to, well, he played on different teams. He got the load, man. He played twin. Then you want to throw all this extra shit at No, fuck all that. Fuck all that. What does he have to do to say he's the best? If you say Michael Jordan is the best and he's the best because of the scoring shit and I surpass it, I don't give a fuck what you talk about no more. This was the this was what I was supposed to be. I did that. And then this is just just in case you want to throw him in front of me, I'm going to top that shit too. There's that argument is over. Oh, he 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 did it in 6 years. I don't care. Well, he only played so I don't give a fuck. He played 82 games for 9. I don't give a shit, right? I, there's no, like, what, what, oh, if he wins one more chip, what the does the chip have to do with the best player? Like, you know, you, you always ask people, who's, who's, who you compare to Mike? I don't compare anybody to Mike, but if I had to answer the question, Kobe is the closest thing to Mike. Mm -hmm. But, like, when it comes to ranking, it's always, it's going to be Mike, going to be Kobe, and then probably LeBron. But I know LeBron, and I think this is LeBron's plan. I think he wants to pass up Kareem. Because if he pass up Kareem in point, we all got to shut the hell up. Yeah. Think about it. For sure. He going to have four rings. You already pass up Kobe. You already pass up Mike. Now he pass up Kareem. So if that don't make him the greatest basketball player is, I don't know, you know, what we're talking about. But, you know, that's, that's always, you know, debatable. Michael Jordan is like, for basketball for me, he's the end all be all. Like, he's the best player I've ever seen. I believe he's the best player I'll ever see. I believe he'll be the best player a million years from now. I really believe that. I believe he is the best ever. What's LeBron, four years younger than you? Uh, four, is he? 30. Yeah, he's about four or five years younger. He was so mature and so polished. So when I was playing with Jordan, we were closest in age because he came up in high school and was playing with us as well. So that's when we first met. And I met Mav and Rich and all those guys way back then. But he was so mature and so curious and he was so polished. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I knew he would be a, a really good pro. I had zero idea he would be this good because they were saying chosen one back then. So the fact that he surpassed expectations 10 years ago, so and he's still adding to, to his legacy, it's, it's unbelievable. But I think Michael even said, I couldn't stop LeBron if he wanted to go to his right and get to the hoop, I wouldn't be able to stop him. And that's coming from Mike, who never gave an inch to anybody. Anybody, yeah, that's saying a lot. And, I played against him one time. I was at the Garden, and he was in Cleveland. And this is a true story, Dan. I can dribble pretty good, right? I get ripped at half court, and I said, I, that had to be a guard. I turned around, and LeBron was dang near <laughs> taking off the right side of the free throw. I said, there's no way that guy that big. <laughs> he took off like a rocket. I'll never forget that. I thought it was a bar. I thought it was Eric Snow or somebody. And he took off like a rocket. He was gone. Unbelievable. You're one of the only people to have ever guarded Michael Jordan and LeBron James. If Jordan set the standard, I'm not comparing the two, but if Jordan set the standard, LeBron has at least at least reached it. And and I'm curious about your perspective in watching him having played against Jordan. First of all, I, I, you know, it's all subjective. I th I think in my opinion Jordan's the GOAT, but I I hate the conversation because in order to justify it, we put down the other. Mm. And and so it's like like LeBron's incredible. Like what he has done, the pressure uh, from a very young age, how he's lived up to the expectations and what he's had to endure 
that I don't think Michael Jordan had to endure. You know, early on, I think he at times would struggle. Now he could like he got to a point I don't know, last 10 years where he could just put up high 30s, get double digit assist and just purely dominate the game. Those old heads who love like Jordan, I don't think we fully appreciate like what what LeBron has done in this environment that he's in and how he's done things off the court. You know, Bron is, you know, my my goat. Is he? Oh, let's talk about that. Bron is the best player because I feel like just because you talk about the best basketball player, not the best killer instinct. You understand what I'm saying? The fact that he can play all five positions, the fact that he's done this shit for 17 years consistently, no drop off at, at any, at any time. time. And we've been saying, well, not we. You can decide. Media. You, you big teething right now. Like, you really feeling this. But I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> he's, he's the best all around player of all he's, time. He's not far. Oh, yeah, there's no question. All right, do we? I'll give him that. Yeah. I'll but if you ask me, do I got to start? Well, I got to start an organization and I need a bad motherfucker. Him. No, I'm going with Mike. Okay. Really? I'm going with Mike. Yeah. I'm going with Mike. But outside of that, it's him, dog. Hands down. Over Magic, Bird, all of them. To play at this high level against the, this competition and to be this successful this late in his career, we want to continue to see this. And I tell people, you better appreciate it while you're seeing it unfold. If the Cavs, if the Cavs find a way to get to the finals, and if the Cavs find a way to beat Golden State or San Antonio, you can make a strong case. It may not be a good case, but you can make a strong case that he is knocking on the door of the GOAT. Uh-oh. I'm not saying he would ever pass him, but you can make a case for that. But you can't be the greatest of all time if somebody's knocking on your door, can you? I, I said you could make a case. I'm not saying it's a strong case, yeah. but you could make a case. But then can you he, say he could be the second greatest player of all time? Numbers-wise, he's going to end up. If you just look at the numbers alone, you would have to say that. I'm not saying he is, because I will always side with Black Jesus. Don't get me wrong. Gone to the final six <laughs> times, six finals MVP, period. And it's the killer instinct that MJ had. I think LeBron's more of a pleaser, and he wants to get everyone involved, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking at the numbers alone, you can make a case. I think the NBA might have a little problem trying to find the next superstar, because especially when LeBron leaves, this icon, what he brung for 20 years at a high level, exactly. speaking up, holding people accountable on the floor and off the court. Mm -hmm. When LeBron leaves, like he's, he's a preacher to the whole choir. And everybody in here, that he speak up and he got opinion. His opinions go a long way. LeBron had to play every night to make everybody better. Michael career early, he didn't do that. LeBron been doing it since day one. Make everybody on the floor better. He just, he played all five positions in his mind, but he makes sure he know the guys on the team, they strip from weakness so he can find them to make them better every night. He don't like shy away from his teammates. If you're on the court with him, he gonna make sure that he gonna get something from you. He gonna count on you in the, in the biggest moment. Now, anybody who got a son, watch LeBron, because if you open, he'll pass your son the ball. And I ain't like some guy look at you and didn't, didn't shoot it. So they said LeBron ain't the guy who wanna take a big shot, but they ain't about taking a shot if somebody checking him. You know, they, they always said, well, Mike would take the shot, LeBron would pass the shot. I mean. Now, would you like playing with MJ or LeBron more, do you think? They asked me, who you going to play with, LeBron or Mike? I said, LeBron, but Mike, my best friend. Mike ain't passing me the ball. Well, MJ never passed me the ball. LeBron <laughs> would pass me the ball. <laughs> so, but I think it's, I didn't, in my career, it wasn't about God passing me the ball. I tell everybody that. <laughs> 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 you don't care if I get a shot today or tomorrow. Because I got the rebound, I set the picks, I made their job easier. Then let no one mess with them. So I made them better. Who's the best player of all time? Oh, is it LeBron James or is it Michael Jordan? When they always make that comparison, who you like, LeBron or Mike? I says, Frosted Flake, Corn Flakes. <laughs> Mike, LeBron. So LeBron got no sugar, Mike got the sugar. So the sugar <laughs> I have, I'm LeBron because I was fro I was Corn Flakes. <laughs> so it's always going to be a comparison. Do you think it's unfair? that folks are often, day after day, making this a LeBron-Michael comparison. When I was younger, I used to be like, nah, MJ's the GOAT. 
Right. I, I, I can't. He's just the greatest to me, man. No, nobody compares. Mike's the guy. Like, as I get older, I'm like, so what? Who? Like, why does it matter? I think LeBron is a GOAT in his era because he's the best. He's been the best player for God knows how long. MJ was the best player in his his era. So he, I mean, I, it, it's, it's two different eras, two different styles of basketball to say who is the GOAT. Even if LeBron doesn't win another championship, to me, he's still arguably one of the best players to ever play this game. And then and some are, may argue he's the best player to play this game. So You want to have that argument with him? I second all <laughs> that, I will, that he said. I will have all of it, arguably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I won't say he's the best, but statistically, um, you, you know, can't argue that. He's, yeah. he's, he is. He's one of the, the greatest. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we all talk about him. Who's the greatest player? You know, is it LeBron or MJ? Let's let's really admire and appreciate, you know, what LeBron brings to the game. And to be 18 years old, no, excuse me, let me go back. 15, 16, 17, called the chosen one, and um, to follow that up with work, working on, being dedicated to the game being dedicated to improving, being dedicated to investing in himself, being dedicated to playing the game the right way. Sometimes where he gets uh, stomped on because he's made the right play and everyone thinks he needs to shoot the ball every time he gets the ball. Like LeBron is a gift and a, a gift to the game of basketball and to the fans. That LeBron ended up you know, breaking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record. At 38,000 points. And keep in mind, the points never really matter to him. What matters to him the most is serving the game where he is inspiring young men to, to play the game they love. He's doing it in a winning way. Uh, Carl Malone, okay. the uh, great Utah Jazz Hall of Famer, joining us, Stan Patrick Show. Okay, now, would you rather have Jordan as your teammate or LeBron James? Uh, LeBron James. Why? Does he play like me. Because he play like me. And I tell you what, we don't start playing until we get hit. So I'm going to say LeBron James. <laughs> and you know what? Let the, look, let the, debate, let, let the debate begin. And I don't give a rat's ass that they do. I just tell you who I would like. I think LeBron James is the most talented player that I've ever seen. And, I'm a, and the reason being, you know, I, sometimes you hear people make a statement, but they don't back it up with nothing. And let me explain to you. LeBron James is about 6'8", over 6'8", about 265, 275. And I would say to do the things that he do, we will never see it again. So all of those haters out there, all of those haters out there, sit back and enjoy. Every now and then, you see a player come through, you say, wow. Well, people don't know how to take them, so they become haters. I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask all I know is they're the two two best players that I've ever witnessed um, they're very different but you know however you want to rank them you know they're they're right there together and thank you guys so much for watching today's video here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy so be sure to check them out and if you did enjoy this one help me out by hitting that like button subscribe if you are new and enjoy these two videos